I am very grateful to speak on this panel regarding the All Survivors Project upcoming report on legacies and lessons. Sexual violence against men and boys, hosted and co-sponsored by the missions of Spain, Liechtenstein, and Switzerland. I have been so grateful to meet with male survivors of sexual violence and those working on this issue in New York, London, and Uganda. That is why I am so sorry I could not be with you in person today. Please accept my greetings and good wishes. Although the vast majority of conflict-related sexual violence occurs against women and girls, it has become abundantly clear in recent years that men and boys are also targeted for sexual violence in conflict. During my tenure as a special representative of the sexual and sexual violence in conflict, I have raised awareness on this issue often and in many different forums to bring to light what is among the most silent of crimes. That advocacy is based on the reports that I regularly receive from conflict situations where tragically we have seen men raped or sexually assaulted in detention settings or boys being trafficked for the purpose of sexual exploitation. But my office has done more than simply raise awareness about the issue of sexual violence against men and boys in conflict. We have sought to eliminate it. In 2013, my office and a team of experts on the rule of law and sexual violence in conflict held a two-day workshop that exclusively examined the issue of sexual violence against men and boys in conflict and issued a set of recommendations to address it. I commend that report to the participants here today, as I expect you will find its content to be both relevant and practical. Furthermore, it has long been a practice of my office to request that UN missions desegregate data on conflict-related sexual violence based on sex, so that the United Nations can accurately understand trends and patterns of sexual violence in conflict that impacts men and boys. I have also advocated with United Nations humanitarian service providers in conflict settings to understand how sexual violence impacts men and boys. And my office has worked with same service providers to ensure that their response to conflict-related sexual violence includes male victims and focuses on their unique needs. However, I must acknowledge that more can be done in this regard, and we will do more. When my mandate has undertaken capacity building with countries in or recovering from conflict, we train justice officials to recognize the signs of sexual violence against men and boys and to vigorously prosecute the offenders. When my mandate has engaged in law reform efforts with governments, it is our practice to recommend that statutes criminalizing rape and other forms of sexual violence are gender neutral. We also advocate against harmful laws and policies that stigmatize or even criminalize the LGBTI community. In our experience, these laws and policies have a negative impact on whether men and boys come forward to report sexual violence at all. Friends and colleagues, just recently, my office held a photo exhibition in the halls of the United Nations General Assembly regarding sexual violence in conflict. In that exhibition, we featured the moving photos and stories of male survivors of sexual violence. One male survivor who was visiting the United Nations was so moved by the display that he created a video of his reactions and posted it online. My office took the opportunity during that exhibition to reaffirm our commitment to addressing sexual violence against men and boys and to end sexual violence in conflict, no matter whom it impacts. I am certain that the study being discussed today on sexual violence against males during the conflict in Sri Lanka and Bosnia will be an important contribution to our understanding of this phenomenon. 
I can promise you that my office will also closely review the lesson plan from this report to see how they can improve our work. I assure you that we can end the use of sexual violence in conflict, whether against women, girls, men or boys. I thank you for your contribution to that important endeavor.